Everyone knows the Kawasaki Ninja, due to the 1986 film Top Gun. A brilliant move by the Japanese brand, offering one of its bikes for this film. Wasn't it? No. On the contrary. They demanded the producer to buy three units. As revenge, the bike appears in the film, without any Kawasaki or Ninja logo. But even so, to this day, everyone recognizes it. And that's how Ninja became synonymous of the original Kaffa Racer principles. Light, powerful, and fast. The only problem is that all the ninjas look too modern. But there is one man who solved this problem. And he did it brilliantly. Welcome to Racer TV. This is one of those projects we usually like at first sight. No matter what angle we look at it from, everything looks absolutely superb. At this point, some of you are probably thinking, there's no way this motorcycle is based on a Kawasaki Ninja. And if you think so too, it also means this project is really very good. But as unbelievable as it may be, this bike is actually based on the Ninja 250. And here is the proof. The difference between the before and after is truly impressive. This Kaffa Racer is the latest work by Juli Puru Wontoro from Indonesia. Although he is not a full-time customizer, he often collaborates with brilliant custom motorcycles. And that is precisely where this Kawasaki was made. Interestingly, the initial plan was to modify just a few pieces. But as the project evolved, Julie realized that he would have to modify the entire motorcycle. And I'm glad he did it. Personally, I never imagined this bike could be transformed into something like this. With the exception of this frame section and the engine cover, almost everything looks different. But interestingly, the brakes and front suspension are still factory original. Unfortunately, there are almost no photos of the building process, but I will try to explain all the changes. This is the original Ninja 250 frame. As you can see, the frame structure under the fuel tank is very different from the usual, which means adapting another motorcycle's fuel tank won't be an easy task. And so Julie decided that a fully customized fuel tank would be the best option. And it really was. The fuel cap is still the original, but the general lines and the size are perfect. I recognize the profile is very similar to the fuel tank of a Kawasaki from the 70s. And there's nothing wrong with that. On the contrary, it has the ideal shape, like a classic cafe racer. Not to mention the size, which is perfect for this project. This subframe section was obviously modified. But pay attention to these details. Notice how the corners have been rounded. Just like some Honda models from the 70s. The side covers are also custom made. But notice the rounded surfaces, which are very well fitted into the frame structure. The custom rear cowl and seat may seem too small for some of you. I'm essentially referring to the level in the side profile. Personally, I think the size suits the overall stance of this bike very well. It could even be bigger 
but I don't think it adds anything to the project. Somehow, it seems to take away some personality. The swing arm was slightly modified to receive the two shocks fixing points. I know some of you don't like seeing this type of tire, not to mention the short suspension travel. But believe it or not, Julie thought there was still room to lower the bike even further and put an even bigger rear tire. This is the most recent update of the project. And so Julie took the project to a more extreme level. But one thing is certain. Aesthetically, I would say the bike has gained some muscle and presence. Julie also cut the front suspension forks, giving it a cleaner look. The belly pan is now grey, helping the engine to apparently gain some volume. Another interesting detail are the wheel rims. Typically they have an anodized aluminum finish. But to achieve a more retro look, Julie polished the rims. The first time I saw this bike on Instagram, I said to myself there is something familiar about this approach. The general posture, and the way all the elements are close to the wheels, reminded me of this project, which I presented last year. It was only later, that I discovered that Julie and Kevin are friends. But I have to say, this is not Julie's first project. The first one is this. Yes, the general stance is similar, but notice how this one seems heavier. The funny thing is that the basis of this project is a Yamaha Bison 150, which makes this transition very interesting to watch. Based on these two projects, I think although the approaches are similar, there is a clear evolution in the Kawasaki project. I would say it is more refined in design and finishes. Not to mention, the beautiful sound of the twin cylinder engine. As I said before, Although the latest version of this Kawasaki is very bold in terms of tire dimensions and suspension travel, I can't help but say that the general posture is really very cool. And something tells me that the designers at Harley-Davidson thought the same thing when they designed the Sportster S. Don't you agree? Thank you for watching Racer TV. And as always, I hope to see you on the next video.